Hi, welcome to Subcreation. I'm Nathan, I'm an artist and a designer, and this channel is about creative process. Today I'm going to be continuing the series of white charcoal drawings on black paper that we've been doing previously. I can show you what we did previously uh, on the last stream. And then I will jump back into some uh, streaming, uh, live streaming of uh, VR sculpting, so working in a program called Oculus Medium. I'm going to uh, continue a project I started last week doing uh, essentially sort of a, a scenery or a landscape type uh, image in in uh, essentially sculpting it out of clay. So I'll pick up where I left off with that, add a little bit to that, and then maybe we'll do a little bit more. Uh, I might just do some uh, sculpting exercises after that, or maybe we'll do something. Um, we'll probably do every week we do, uh, or every uh, stream we do a Rubik's Cube solve. Oh, except I am missing my Rubik's Cube. So, you know, we may do a two by two. We usually do a three by three solve. Tonight we'll probably do a two by two solve because that's what I have there. So uh, that'll mix things up a bit, keep it interesting. And, uh, and then whoever is able to guess the um, my time, that's what we do each week, is I try to stream, I try to solve the cube as fast as I can, and we see if, uh, if the viewers are able to guess my time, and whoever guesses closest to the time picks the next project. And uh, tonight, I think maybe we'll just have them pick an animal for me to sculpt. So that's that's the plan. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the oh here. So you can see here are some of the uh, images that I've been working on previously. We have this um, owl. Before that, we had done the. Uh, the tiger here. There was this bat hanging upside down. The pine marten was actually my entry for the Fauna Focus project in the previous week. Uh, this panther here is actually the first one that I did. And we did the beta one uh, before that, or a while ago. And then there's this uh, horse. None of these have been posted, or actually some of them, but three of these haven't been posted yet to um, to Instagram. So that's, that's something I meant to do that actually before the stream tonight, but I guess I'll have to do it perhaps on Sunday. So I'm going to go ahead and just tear off this. Don't like tearing off of my paper there. I wonder if the chat, I have, I'm using a restream chat, so I'm not sure that we're there, but just in case, I'm going to go ahead and say hello. Oh, the only downside about this uh, is that it doesn't let me do, um, just realize I'm not going to be able to, oops, let me do that. All right, I'm not going to be able to do uh, my um, I won't be able to do emotes that way. So let me go ahead and pull out pull out the regular chat box for that. Use the pop out. So the next uh, task is going to be choosing since we just finished up the owl. We'll need to pick a new subject for this week. Uh, but before that, I just want to see if I can get an emote. 
uh, get my emote working here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can copy it from this window and paste it in this one. Yep, that works. Okay, so I have the ability to use emotes now. That's cool. Um, all right, so we'll switch over to this view here. Oh, one other thing actually on the plan for today, just so we all know what's, what's going on after the sculpt that we do from the uh, cube, the cubing exercise. Um, I'm going. I'm doing a new thing each week where there's an installment, an episode of sort of a flash fiction piece, very very short, just a, a small a short paragraph, um, and it's all based on Dan breeding, which is a way that used computer networks to generate imagery. So the computer generate images. The computer network gen generates these images, and then I choose those images that inspire a story. So we'll do that in a little bit. So that is the plan for tonight. So this is the wall where I shoot typically the, the pin board that I usually pick images from that I've been collecting them on. Um, I will share that out. And if you want, let's see, you also there, there are some suggestions down here at the bottom. Let me, let me scale this down so you can see the suggestions. Um, White windows is could be a little bit of a pain. There we go. So we could pick from one of these. We just did an owl, so I'd say the owl is probably out. And that rhino looks a bit like the rhino that we did previously. Let me go back up and see that. I mean, this is the knot that we did previously, the rhino that is already selected up here. So there's this rhino. When it comes to selecting these images, I kind of prefer the ones that have their, the more black it is, the better it is, because you get more impact from having it be white on dark. Um, so this is another rhino. It's definitely different, but it's a little bit more interesting. And this right here is actually, this is definitely the owl that I just did, but it's inverted, so it's looking the other way. It's a little odd. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick search for light on dark. Animal. Black and white photo. Let's see what that gets us. All right, so we got a feather. Little girl with a wolf. That's got to be composited. Let's see. This cat is kind of interesting. I got a fox there. Another horse. Just did a horse. I don't think that slugs. Very good. Back of a zebra. We got an elephant. All right, well, so there's not that many images, not that much to pick from. It seems that they're repeating a lot. Got a fish there. All right, so I'll probably go with one of the ones I selected before and probably actually already have, I'm going to hit back. I think the rhino is interesting, the elephant is interesting. Um, I think I'm going to do either the, the rhino or the elephant. Look at the set I've already done. I have done one cat already, so, but I do think there's something more interesting about it. I have this already open in another tab. This cat 
is interesting because it's very uh, intense. The emotion is intense. Um, and it's a little bit different from the other pictures that I've been doing where really the emotional center has been primarily in the eyes. This one is obviously all about the mouth. Um, I've done a number of images with that have the, the whiskers flaring up. But this one, the whiskers are, are kind of symmetrical and balanced. That's interesting. And this image has an interesting symmetry to it. It's nearly some, uh, bisymmetrical, but it's... Yeah, so I think I'm probably going to go ahead and start on this one. I, I think this is the one I want to do. Oh, hey, Callan, thanks for joining us. All right. So, um, yeah, so Catlin, if you just joined us, we are choosing the next image to, to start drawing. Probably not going to finish it this week or tonight, maybe. Could be done. I don't know. This is maybe more than two sessions. Um, let me go ahead and start the tunes. So I don't know if you saw the choices I was picking from. Um, we have between a rhino, an elephant, and this guy. And I think I'm going to go with this guy unless you had another option you'd like me to consider. Okay. Oops. I realize this is not quite set up to the screen. Oh, you like the elephant, huh? Are you, are you saying you have another elephant you want me to look at? Or are you saying the elephant is the one in the set that you wanted me to, to do? Let's go back and look at that one. All right, let's see. Hmm. Ah, boy, Windows is so aggravating the way it does window. The way it tries to adjust the windows drives me nuts. I try to stay accustomed to both Windows and Mac OS, but boy, I really prefer Mac OS. It doesn't make stupid guesses about what I'm trying to do when I'm positioning my windows. I need to see if I can zoom back out some more here. There we go. So that's pretty good. All right. Yeah, I think this is interesting. It's got that spiral going on. Uh, I'm down to do this one. Oh, he does look sad. I think he's, uh, looks like he's eating something there. Okay, so I'm going to. Give this a shot. Let's pull this up a little bit. All right, almost done messing with that. Okay, I'm going to start by kind of dividing up the paper a bit. 
do some measurement. Let's see, this actually has Let's see, how do I, I kind of like to zoom this out. Oops. Didn't drop my phone. Okay. Let's just get it and jump into this, or I'll scoot this over so I have a little bit more room. Okay. Another idea I had for something we might try this week, might do it on Sunday instead though, I was thinking of, uh, oh, it's like, a, like I've got a visitor. Hey, what do you need, sweetheart? It's all right. It's okay. Do you need something? Make sure you make sure you brush your teeth after all that candy, okay? It is an elephant, isn't it? I love elephants. Oh, that's great that you love. They're big. They are big. Yeah, small. All right, why don't you go watch your show and make sure that you. Yeah, that's true. Make sure that you brush your teeth after you finish that, that lollipop, okay? Okay. Hey, thanks for the follow, Tom the Phantom, 12. Welcome, it's great to have you with us. How are you doing tonight? Starts from way over here. So, ah, you're good. That's good to hear. Are you, uh, are you an artist yourself, Tom the Phantom? Tell us, tell us about your projects, whatever you've been up to. Been drawing birds. Oh. You're welcome to uh, share your Instagram link if you have a linked Instagram or if you have your artwork anywhere, I'd be happy to pull it out and take a look. Also, um, we're gonna be getting onto Discord later. You can share on, actually Discord's a great place to share if you don't have it posted already. This is actually my Discord. Let me go ahead and pull up, uh, see, share with this link. 
I guess I guess that's it. So I think I've I've got that uh, back to my source. There it is. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and so that's the Discord. If you want to post um, artwork, the section called artwork. I don't have a separate section for uh, viewers to post their art. We just put all of our artwork in in the section. The channel called artwork so if you want to post it there uh, that would be great if you, that is if you don't have a place you can link it yeah so it sounds like you're into the same kind of thing that we're doing here that I've been doing lots of animal sculpting I actually did a bird um, uh, it was a few weeks ago I was drawing with Copic markers in color, and I did my first uh, marker drawing with a with a bird of a bird. Uh, that seems way too high. Or if you don't have anything that you want to share, you can just. Tell us about it. Like, what's your medium? Are you uh, are you working with ink or paint or pencils? We do all mixed kind, all like mixed media here. I should say, I say we because it's like supposed to be collaborative and interactive. Um, but uh, I've been using sort of a variety of media here. I do both digital and um, I, do, I do digital and uh, obviously I'm, I'm doing uh, traditional here. Lately for digital I've been doing uh, 3D sculpting. Oh, I'm mostly using pencils. Oh, cool. Yeah, pencils are pretty, pretty versatile. You can do quite a bit with it, with that. I did a little bit, I started to do a little bit with color pencils and it was more challenging. I haven't quite figured out. I've got a knack for working with the waxed, wax pencils, the way they sort of build up gradually. Um, I did use color pencils a long time ago, but I think they weren't wax based, so I had a little bit of a struggle when I. That is still looking and like it's in the wrong place. Yeah, so tonight, after I I'm gonna work on this for a little while, later on I'll be doing some uh, sculpting using a program called Oculus Medium. So I like to just mix things up. And what I was saying when you joined us, actually before I was interrupted by my visit from my daughter, that is, that is too high, that's the problem. It's still too high. I was thinking it might be kind of fun to do a digital project. Um, I was thinking of showing how I make chatbots. If you look in the, um, the widgets down below, whatever those are called, the panels down below, I have a chat bot that basically runs a survey. And I'm thinking about making a, I have a, this size, look at this position, looks a little better. I'm thinking about making a survey that would help with uh, when people make a selection. So like I do, each night we do a thing, about halfway through, I'm gonna work on this for maybe an hour. Uh, which we're actually about half hour into. Um, but what we do is I, I do a, a Rubik's Cube solve. I try to solve a Rubik's Cube as fast as I can. And the idea is that viewers, usually there's only a couple people here anyway, so you got a good shot, you make any guess at all, and you're the only one who guesses, uh, then you yeah, a pretty good chance of no matter what I guess, you'll be the closest, uh, or whatever, I, whatever my time is, you'll be the one that... Uh, wins and the winner gets to pick the next thing that I do. 
But the challenge has been, well, what I usually have people do is pick the subject, and then I usually pick the um, medium. But the problem I found from that is sometimes some images lend themselves better to some mediums than others. So the solution I was thinking for that is having a chat bot that when you win the thing, you follow the link and do the chat bot and the chat bot will take you through a series of questions that will ask you, what medium do you want me to work in? What type of subject would you like? Actually start with the subject then give you a set of options for medium. And then based on those two choices, it'll send you to Pinterest boards that I'll have prepared that will have references you can pick from. That way I can kind of give people some flexibility uh, to feel like they have some control. You could even supply some of your own images maybe in some cases. Um, but for the most part, by following the steps, you'll end up on a, a reference that um, works with the medium. So, so far, the options have typically been I've been drawing animals and Sharpie, uh, or I draw, or I've been sculpting. Um, now I, I want to do some sculpting of scenery, but the problem is some scenery works well in VR and some scenery is really hard. If it's got any architecture at all, it's really difficult. The program's more organic. It's not very well suited for... Wait, it looks, some, looks like this, this elephant has like some scarring or something on the side of its head. It's kind of painful. But yeah, the... So sometimes we choose, um, uh, anyway, yeah, it'll just make it easier. And so what I thought would be fun is before doing that, we'd actually maybe create the survey bot on the stream. So I'd be interested to know if anyone would like to see that tonight. We could do it tonight. If not tonight, we can do it on Sunday. Um, I'm probably going to do want to get to it here. Sooner rather than later, though. What I, what I want to do is sort of increase the level of interactivity on the stream. I want more like I want more audience participation, but I also need to have some some ability to sort of steer things a bit so that I don't end up out of my depths. Sometimes it's easy to get into a situation where I'm drawing something that's kind of kind of beyond my my ability. I also do some coding on stream. I've done that a bit before. A little bit of animation. And uh, those are also areas where, you know, coding takes a fair amount of preparation. I had one really, I don't know if I quite say disastrous, but one really challenging stream where I was trying to uh, debug some really challenging errors on uh, live on stream. and had a lot of people dropping in and then leaving right away because I'm sure it was as torturous for them as it was for me. But yeah, that's a bit of what the stream is about. Also like brainstorming ideation, that's something that we that I plan to do a lot of here. And talk about creative process. All right, probably kind of hard to see what I'm doing there. So I always do the outline first in black lead on black paper. So you can kind of see, you can see it a little bit if you look just at the right angle. So I can see it while I'm working, but it doesn't leave much of a, uh, it doesn't leave much on the, in the finished work. I'll try to look at it and see those. That seem about right. I should probably do some measurements and just see how. So it looks like the curl is about as wide as the trunk. Let's see if that lines up with the image. 
that curl almost exactly. Okay, and the width of the trunk is the same as the distance from from where the trunk starts to where the food starts. So from there to there and there to there. Okay, I didn't actually draw the food in so much, so there we go. All right, so that seems about right. Let's see about... Okay, so this actually is about half the width of the trunk, and that's exactly half. That's pretty reassuring when you get to a point where you can kind of eyeball everything, and then when you come back to do the... Now, you know what's interesting also is that the measurements happen to be in proportion. I measure, my measurements here are about the same as they are at the distance I'm doing the measurement here. So that makes it easy. So this is the same distance from there to there. So that's really good, very clean. I think it's I think it's pretty pretty close. Uh, the forehead is a little a little short. Is that is that true? The forehead goes from there to there, there. There to there. Okay, so from about there to there is the same as. That's pretty close. I have it cropping a little bit off to the top, but I think that's okay. I don't think that that forehead is that that critical. Although I don't know, I could shift it all down a bit. All right, let's see. Oops. Oh, everything's falling down. All right. So here we go. I mean, I sharpen this though. We experienced another what I call sharpener mageddon, which is when you go to sharpen your pencil and the lead breaks off, and it keeps breaking off every time that you go to sharpen it. That's sharpener mageddon. Really hope that's not happening. Okay. Yep, didn't break off. We're good, we're good. We had break off twice last week. Or on Sunday, actually. This week. Alright, that's good. I don't want to tempt fate. So, I had to keep happening so many times today. Yeah, that's the worst. It's just the worst. So, I like to try to capture sort of the emotional center and work out from that. I just feel like it kind of gives me the, it's like I'm establishing the drawing first, that I think the eyes I mean, that eye there is that's the sadness in the eye is sort of the central feature. But I think I'm not. I'm not going to go right to it. I'm going to kind of work into it from the brow here. That's just kind of what my instinct is telling me. Of course, it makes more sense. I always say that, but I always try to. Um, Right now I'm doing kind of a, a realistic, a very slow and, and semi-realistic render, or mostly realistic render. So in that case, I mean, it's still, you're going mostly for accuracy, and if you get achieve accuracy, it should convey the emotion in the, in the reference. But... Um, it's most important, like when I was doing the, um, previously I was doing these, I need to bring this up, I'm like hunching over too much here. Okay. Bring this up a little bit more. Okay. 
But anyway, previously when I was doing uh, Sharpie drawings, then there was a fair amount of interpretation that was happening, particularly when it came to the eyes. So it's more important when you're doing something that's more interpretive or impressionistic. But nonetheless, I like to think about it whenever I do a drawing, even if I am just kind of copying what I see. Because I feel that, that um, when you're drawing realistically, at least in, in my view, when you're drawing realistically, you're practicing to develop the skill to be able to have more mastery when you draw it impressionistically or, or um, in a more interpretive style. So if you're trying to build skill, then you want to focus in the same way. And that's why I'm trying to focus uh, more or less on the, what I call sort of the emotional core of the image. Of course, animals are an interesting subject for doing, for doing that with. When you draw people, obviously they have, the emotions are more more direct or more certain, I guess. Because in uh, animal drawings, I'm not sure to what degree I'm projecting the emotions. You know, I might be interpreting features in a way that aren't really there, but the effect is the same. I think everybody relates to animals that way, kind of projecting human traits onto them that may, may be imagined. Not always, I think. It's my experience with like cats, for example. Well, that is, that is a little bit too, too much, too light. So this can be a little bit challenging because I need this light myself, but it doesn't work very well on camera. So that's what's going on when I'm messing with this light here is I'm trying to get get it so I can see.
Kinda makes me sad to draw such a sad elephant. I'd imagine that. I mean, can he really be? That's gotta be, be me projecting that on him, right? He can't really be as sad as it appears. And what would he look like if he was happy about this particular fighting? But he looks sad to me. Boy, it really packs a lot of emotion, it seems. Let's read a lot of emotion in this thing. Thanks for picking us out tonight, Catlin. It's a good it was a good call. It might be because they appear to have very weathered, um, since they have such weathered, wrinkled looking skin, maybe we interpret that sort of like when you see an elderly person, you kind of read that as being many years of, of uh, experience and emotion and life lived, that we sort of interpret an owl, uh, elephant's appearance in that way. I don't know. Should probably get some black charcoal. I've, I've seen that other artists working in charcoal will work in white and then will draw over it with black. And that's something, that's one reason I think I was struggling a bit with the, the um, color pencils that I experimented with before, is I didn't, don't quite have the knack for layering it. Because you have to maintain a certain degree of the tooth of the paper. You see I'm working here where I'm just adding and, and removing stuff. Oh, I'm sorry, I just realized that this camera is focusing and unfocusing and that drives me nuts. I've got to fix that. Uh, it must be this one here. 
Nope, that's not it. Just a sec. Uh, overhead, that's the one I want to fix. Configure video. It's going to bring up a little control right here, and I got to turn off autofocus. Okay. There we go. All as well. In addition to doing some live coding on screen on stream, uh, I've also done a little bit of, uh, of music. In fact, uh, if you catch the beginning of my stream, I have a uh, an intro um, stream starting thing. I do the music for that. That's my own composition, and. Uh, so that might be one of the things I'll incorporate into the uh, viewer's choice, winner's choice thing. That we could do something like, um, maybe we could do some music thing too. I don't know, I don't know a lot of things I could do covers for though, not quite, not at that level. I mostly do composition. Uh, we might find something fun we could do with that. watched a really disturbing movie last night and now it's like stuck in my head. It's like I got to keep finding other things to think about to not go back and dwell on that movie. How are we on time? All right, we're coming down to, I'd say, in about five minutes. We'll uh, wrap this up, set it aside, and we'll do the, uh, might need a quick break. And then I'll do the Rubik's Solve.
I'm gonna pull out some of the key highlights here. It's kind of lacking a bit of dimensionality in here. Let's see, that's going goes down a bit like that. This one kind of comes straight out and goes like that. And then there's another one right here. Then turn out to be kind of quiet streams lately. I'm trying to strike a balance between, uh, I know this is really the time of day when people are starting to to uh, wind down. Oftentimes they come here after going to more more. Uh, Engaging stream, maybe a gaming stream or something. So I think to kind of be like a calm, winding down stream is a part of the vibe. But at the same time, I kind of want there to be a certain amount of room for, um, like I was thinking, have it be a little bit more activity at one point and then have it kind of wind down rather than having it start out. Um, so low key. It's been very low key. Not in the sense the way everyone uses the word low key now, though. Low key isn't like super chill.
All right. All right, well, it is nine, so I think that's a pretty good start on that. I'm going to take a short bio break, and I'll be right back. So please hang around. We'll do the uh, Rubik's Cube solve after this, and you can have a shot at, uh, at uh, helping direct the next next uh, drawing. Whatever we do, it might be a sculpt. Actually, I think it's going to be a sculpt. We're going to do... Uh, we're going to do Rubik solve, and then um, I think we'll pick an animal to sculpt. That would be that'd be fun. So that'll be what the winner of the Rubik solve will pick, which animal to draw. And we'll actually have a few references because when you're sculpting, you need multiple angles of the animal. So hold on, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So I've misplaced both of my three by threes. So we'll have something a little bit different tonight. We'll be solving the two by two, which should go a lot faster. So just a little hint there. Uh, in the past, the trick is you want to guess. The clue I always give everyone is you want to guess a number that is between what I call the deltas of shame. The deltas deltas of shame are if the you guess the number too low, like Tikiwa does every time, I don't know if you're out there, Tikiwa. Tikiwa usually has been showing up just in time for the uh, Rubik solve, solve. But if you guess really low, like 45 seconds or 30 seconds, which is a little bit above my record, at least my recorded record, um, then I'm going to be very... I'm going to be ashamed. But if you guess the number too high, 
uh, which I'd say, like, yeah, the longest time I've had on here so far has been four minutes on the three by three. So if you guess five minutes, then then you're making me be ashamed that you think that I can't do it faster than that. So those are the deltas of shame. You want to be somewhere in between those. However, it's a two by two. Here, I'm going to pause the music for a moment while we while we do this. So it's a it's a two by two, and that means that uh, it's actually a lot easier because there aren't as many pieces, obviously. Three, three minutes. It's a two by two, Catelyn. That that would be the okay. Maybe maybe you might be wise. You're you're <laughs> you're just uh, upset that I was like doubled your time last time. That was that was a rare instance, I assure you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the timer. You have a stopwatch here. I'm gonna switch over to the. Uh, that's that is the time. Oh, look at there it is. There is the number of shame right there. Yeah, this was previously beyond what we call the delta decision. Okay, two minutes. That's that's a little better. Feeling a little better about that one. Okay, so just so you know, the four four minutes and five seconds is now my uh, upper. The limit on the delta of shame. Okay, so we're gonna reset. And uh, usually, I get I start out by having a couple seconds to figure out where the where the pieces are exactly, and then we're just gonna go ahead and start. Okay. Let's see. I didn't I didn't really get much of a sense for where they are, did I? Um, Uh, okay, you know what? I, I may have, have uh, forgotten that this can be more challenging. There we go. Okay, that really took way longer than that should have, but I'm having a hard time kind of remembering how these, these ones move, though, and that is totally wrong. Uh, Okay, I've got to beat two minutes after telling you that you really had to. Okay. Right. There we go. And then this one is. Um, okay. There we go. That wasn't. Uh, I I beat your time, so I feel good. You have a pretty good win, pretty clear win there, Catlin. So a uh, minute and twenty four. That's actually the best time I think I've had on any stream, but obviously it's because of the two by two. So back to picking the uh, back to picking the artwork. So we're going to want to select some animals. Uh, what? So go ahead and name an animal, Catlin, and we'll pick several reference images uh, to use in the sculpt. I'll have to import them into, um, oh, here it's making some suggestions based on my past stuff, but go ahead and pick something. Catlin, just off the top of your head, whatever you'd like. While I wait for you, I will type in animal, animals. So keep in mind, oh, alligator. That is a good pick. That is a really good pick. Because I was going to say, the thing that you want to keep in mind um, Maybe it helps to say alligators, so they. I 
because uh, working in clay, I'm going to be, uh, uh, let's see. Okay, this is a pretty good picture right here. A little alligator going for a stroll. So let's go ahead and save that image. Actually, I should open the image first, so I'm sure I have the right image. Open image in a new tab. Sometimes, yep, that's a good one. Okay, so save image as desktop. We'll save it as alligator1. Alligator1. All right, and oops. Let's go back and we need some. Uh, now I need one where he's kind of looking straight, straight ahead. Could use a closer image of the face. Is that this one's a little bit better, except he's partly covered in water. Would like a really straight on one. Well, those are pretty straight on, but they're also. Uh, that's interesting. It really ride, looks like the baby's right on top of the heads. That one looks a little different. I wonder if that's a crocodile. Like, don't the crocodiles have the sharper noses like that? All right, let me just go back up and. That's a good one. Put an image in a new tab. Go ahead and save that. Call that one alligator two. Alligator two. And then let's see, do they have more? Sometimes you get the better images in the reference down below, they say similar images. And you can find them down there. Um boy, kind of Bummer for an animal to be more common to show up to find shoes on a search for it. And I kind of like that this one has, uh, in addition to having the face, um, in addition to having a bit of a close up on the face, you get a pretty good look at that uh, texture there on the tail. So. Save that. And maybe one more of the face. That's another good one of the crocodile baby on the, just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and save that one too. image in a new tab, save image as, be a pretty big project though to try to get this level of detail. I was thinking of just kind of roughing it out, but we'll see, maybe I'll do more for inspired. All right, going up. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna bring up medium. Let's see if you guys able to see that. All right, Oculus medium. Gotta be careful not to. Well, the first thing I need to do though is I need to bring up my virtual desktop because that allows me, you guys can't see this here, but I have a, um, just put this up above, I think. Oops, I can't quite see it though. Uh, want it right there. I want to pin it. There we go. All right. That way I can see the chat. Um, all right, so. And I do see the chat. Oops. Um, go ahead and bring up 
we could just real quick before I jump into this, I'll show some of the other uh, sculpts that I've done so you can kind of get an idea for the type of thing that we'll be doing here. I don't know if I'll do it quite to this level of detail, but this is a house fly that I did once before. So you can see you both have the ability to you have some material control. You can paint it. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so it's kind of like sculpting and painting. It's actually a lot of fun. Um, let's take a look at something else. This guy. Uh, whoa. So this is actually uh, something I did for the um, Bona Focus group, which is uh, it's a sort of competition each week to draw um, to draw a different animal each month, and this was a Tasmanian devil. So that was kind of fun, especially with all these whiskers in there. Oh, thanks, Catelyn. Thanks for uh, comment on the house fly. This guy is kind of ugly, but uh, you know they actually are being afflicted by a condition that makes their mouths. I didn't draw any of those tumors around their mouths, but those tumors that you might see in the reference are actually a condition that is, uh, I think it's actually wiping them out right now. It's a form of cancer or something. So that's kind of sad. That's a part of what Fauna Focus does sometimes is raise awareness around certain animals. And what else? Uh, we did this uh, T-Rex. You can see it's sort of a rough T-Rex. So this is sort of more the level of detail I was thinking of doing for the sculpt today. I wasn't planning on doing necessarily painting it, but I don't know, maybe we'll if, if the if inspiration moves me. But yeah, this was a, a design that I did essentially uh, as a a model to re do reference or actually did a drawing based on this, um, an ink drawing that was used as a design for a cake that I was doing for my daughter's birthday. She's really into dinosaurs. Um, but unfortunately, the, the, I used Albertsons to do the, um, the cake and they weren't able to, uh, even though they originally gave me the the criteria and said they could print it. They weren't able to load the image um, and print it. So let's see. Last time we did uh, that thing right there, but we'll come back to that because I'm actually going to work on that a little bit more tonight. But this is the other sculpt, animal sculpt. So this is kind of the level. Well, there's a little bit. I think I'll do a little more detail in this, more like the um, T-Rex, but you can see here are a series of animals. I have multiple references there that I based it on. You can see I did a sculpt for each one. The idea is just to develop, develop a little more uh, skill around working with the clay. Uh, one thing I did when I was working on these, I tried actively to just work forward and not to undo or redo. Um, oops. I gotta, should probably, this light isn't doing me any good now, so I'm gonna move it out of the way. I'm just gonna run into it now. I'll probably knock into this stuff a little bit anyway, but. Uh, so here we have an ostrich. You see, it's fairly basic, but the idea was I tried to sculpt this and I was working on efficiency, so I went as fast as I could and tried to not, um, not let it uh, not not get caught up. Just you know the tendency when you work digitally versus working in traditional art. Oh, you know what? Let me turn the music back on. Since we're back into back into the drawing, but the tendency when you work in uh, digital versus traditional is that you're going to be tempted to. Um, to repeat strokes a lot. There are times when you can't avoid it, frankly, but um, yeah, star blank sculpt. Real quick, I'm gonna go into this.
Whoops. Uh oh. I uh I lost my window there somehow. I gotta come back into All right, I guess that's just as good as I can do, so I'll just keep that up there like that. All right. All right, I'm going to... Uh... Oh, no, no. What I want to do now is add image. I'm going to go to a PC and desktop. And uh, there we go. Oh, wait. No, that's not. That looked like it might have been an alligator for a second, but I was not looking very close. Sometimes it's a little slow to recognize when they're new images in the hmm. some for some reason it's having trouble recognizing the uh, uh, this is always a pain nothing ever works like it should all right hold on a moment Alright, on the desktop, I most certainly have those images. Alright, well I'll just try, what I usually do when this happens is I just go into each place that it appears to be there I copy it, I copy these, copy, and I'm just going to paste them into the other locations. So I'll, I'll paste them into um, paste. All right, let's give that a shot. There they are. What do you know they showed up? All right, so we got that guy. Good. Kind of like to have them kind of big, but whoa. I guess I need to back up a little bit. There we go. Let's add another image. Add this guy. So I just set up my reference here so I can see see what I'm working on. I like to have them from multiple angles. This thing is a little bit there we go. And one more. This guy. All right. Okay, so now I've got my sculpting layer. And I'm going to try to do this in a few basic stamps and then I'm going to start sculpting out the different parts. So let's do that. So 
So starting here. So you can see I can choose from a lot of existing stamps. I even have some animal stuff. It might be sometimes uh, you can start with another shape and kind of sculpt it through it, but my goal here isn't really to do that. Uh, it's to work with work with the shapes that I with some, start with some primitive shapes, shapes basically. There we go. So primitive. I think that is the kind of shape that I want really. Actually, that one's a little too. I want. Isn't one of these a little flatter? Yeah, that's what I want. And, I'm, and one thing I do, uh, similar to in design, I do something similarly. I, during the day, I design uh, applications at a, a company. And uh, the trick is you kind of want to work in low fidelity and then go up to high fidelity. So I'm going to start this out. Um, actually, I want this to be kind of brown is actually a good color to sculpt in. kind of gives you a lot of. Also, can be good to when you're sculpting. Um, it can be helpful to have a good, um, like a little bit more specularity, so you can kind of see detail a little bit better. The roughness may bring the roughness down a little bit. Having it shiny can kind of help you. I think. At least, I think that's what I learned in one of the. Uh, There are some videos that the company that makes this um, releases to show you how to techniques from experts and such. Okay, so I'm gonna. It's got kind of this. I see I'm doing it already, multiple strokes, you know. And you really don't want to do that. You want to just do it once and you kind of live with whatever you, you got. Also, you're going to be, a lot of it's going to be. A lot of this is going to be um, reshaping with the move tool. I should need to do the, the face now. A little bit of the face is going to be maybe this, because there's going to be a lot of room to change it in a moment, so I don't want to. Trouble not getting line of sight to these. Oh, you know what? Let me face this direction a little bit better for. Yeah. If I face this way, then that camera, that sensor over there will see me a little bit more. You can see we're reaching the uh, limits of the fidelity. And I'll work on the, the feet later. I'm going to go ahead and move to the move tool. Kind of flatten it with that, see? So you can do, you can do just a ton really with just the, the move tool. Um, notice that one has its tail kind of curling around, and so does that one, so probably be interesting to give it a bit more of a or shift its body a bit, you know, and may turn it like this. And then this means it's gonna kinda curl around, I think. Uh, what does that do? It kinda does flip around. I don't know, it's what I'm trying to do is a little bit advanced though. Let 
looking at that one straight on, it's going to have a bit more this. The only thing about working in VR is it can be somewhat separating from the audience. I've got, don't, uh, in the past I was doing this without the ability to see the uh, conversation, but I've got, you guys can't see it, but I've got the chat right there. So if you talk to me, I'm, I'm right here. I'll hear you. I'll see you. I mean, I don't know. I suppose it also might give you a sense I'm kind of separated here, so. I think this needs to flatten a bit overall. When I think of an alligator in my mind, it's very flat. And that looks kind of flattened. They also have kind of a... Uh, this actually reminds me a lot of the T-Rex. That was a lot about its... Uh, about its... body that reminds me of that T-Rex. Oh, whoa, that, that took back out way more than I meant to. Just trying to get a little bit of a jaw there by letting this sort of gather in here. Um, it's not the only way to do that, but I kind of prefer. See, there's a fair amount of simplification that happens when you use this tool. so quickly from like nothing to being huge. There we go, maybe that'll work. Let's see what I need to pull out. It's interesting is the move tool doesn't seem to doesn't seem to care so much about volume you know it's not the, the way the other tools work you're working very much at volume all right uh tom the phantom thanks for joining it was great having you here tom the phantom said i'm gonna sleep now got some big tests bye yeah thanks for joining here let me uh push you off properly here good night So, go ahead and give you the sub creation. Uh, and thanks for the follow again. It's always great to meet new people. did it. So you know what, I'm definitely at the limits of uh, this this resolution. So I think I've, I've pushed this too far for its resolution and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to up res. Let's, uh, I think that's under actions, increase resolution. So you can see, see how it sort of shows you all those cubes? That sort of gives you an idea of how much resolution is there. And I'll do it one more time. And that, this is a much more reasonable level of resolution. Still, this tails. So one thing you can do also, so there are a couple, there's a tool that will help with this. It's the inflate tool. And it will just, oops. Hmm. It's supposed to be inflating, but you'll notice that it uh, 
It has a tendency on narrower shapes to actually deflate. Notice how it's deflating before it inflates? That is weird. I'm going to go ahead and just subtract that. But now that I do have more to work with there, I can just sort of stretch this out. And you can also smooth a bit. You know, what I was saying about how this sort of ignores volumes, though. Ah, uh, this is bad. This is just bad. I'm going to just... Oops. You know, it's actually kind of a flatter shape, really. Maybe this. So now I'm doing that thing I was just saying I shouldn't do, which is taking multiple attempts at a shape. Also, what I'm uh, this whole thing is back to undoing like crazy. Yeah, forming lots of bad habits right now. Must have undone the level of uh, resolution because this seems low res again. Or lower res than I thought I had it. Actions. Where, where is it? Why is it not? There we go. Actions. Yep, we lost, we lost some resolution. Right, it's the move tool, see if that helps. Remember, the move tool does a little bit of uh, does a little bit of smoothing. So you're gonna lose some detail when you're doing that. But anyway. So I can see there are four ridges going up there. And let's get back to this head and make it a little bit more interesting. Basically, so if you look at that reference there, he's got a jaw and then he's got this like, sort of like a puffer hanging down section on his neck. All right. So now I got that, I can, I previously had a whole section sort of devoted to that, but no one.
This jaw still needs a lot more definition. Oops. Just add those those uh, it's a little bit too uh, is there a longer one at all? This this one's a little bit longer, I don't know. In the wrong direction, my sensors are having a little bit of trouble detecting me. You can tell because my hands start drifting, drifting away from where I am. I'm going to put this one's foot like that, and this other foot is kind of going like that. So this foot here is going like straight back. It's a little smaller. This one is going forward. It's creeping. It's really creeping over that grass. This one is just going like. Kind of goes back in like that a little bit. And this one's going kind of forward but under a little bit, it seems. It's kind of weird. All right. Let's see. There's a little bit of a like old foot type thing going on. Maybe I'll actually start by flattening these guys a little bit. Should probably do a number of adjustments on them. This is actually longer. I think this is probably a longer. Not too much longer though. Now I think about it. This thing right here, it really shouldn't be. Uh, I guess one way to do this kind of. Okay. 
This is getting kind of too sharp back there, but maybe if I can kind of grab the top of the bolt down, I can bring some of that volume back. You can kind of stretch it, see, so I can actually add volume by stretching a particular surface. It's kind of crazy. Anyway, this is not going to be perfect. I'm doing a fairly low. Uh, uh, you know, this looks too big. Let me fucking kind of. These, these limbs are way too big, aren't they? Well, I could. Skinny him up a bit with some smoothing. Let's see that these don't quite have the they do as much of the flattening. That does not look that much like an alligator, does it? That's right, it's not done yet. I think it needs to be stretched. Oops. Out a bit, maybe. I don't know. Something's definitely not right about this thing. Let's go ahead and add those feet I was kind of thinking about doing before. Yeah, there they are. thing it's important to remember is that you can just uh, scale up and scale down. So when you're going into more detail, you need more precision, scaling in, resume, uh, going in close is helpful. Totally perfect. Okay, so let's do at least some detail around this face though. So, one way to do detail is to take something like this and to use it as a tool. So, you can kind of draw cut into it. 
This is gonna need more resolution. Okay. So they have these kind of wavy mouths up front. And there's the off as well do as well in this case you want to kind of whoops. Not that much though. A little, a little lower. You can also reduce the um, no, can't control the uh, intensity here. Size, thickness, thickness, stroke, taper speed, steady stroke. Huh. There's actually, there's a setting on this, I remember. Uh, what was it? Oh, I, I'm, I'm forgetting. I, that's why I'm not able to do it. I'm on the wrong. I'm going to go to uh, smooth is what I want. Go to smooth. All right, now in smooth, you can set it so that it flattens. That way it won't uh, do the averaging that's messing me up. And then strength. I wanted to take the strength down. I feel like it's a little too strong. So let's try this again. That's better. It's more, more like what I want. time oh I'm almost out of time all right well then we'll just do some uh, some scales and then call it call it good well, well, how will I do for the scales 
um, primitives, I guess. I think this should be more of like a single rather than a... It should have been getting smaller. several rows of rows. Oh, the scales, because I feel like between those and the jowls, those are kind of the defining features that make it look like it's an alligator. When I was a kid, my dad used to make bread and shape it like different kinds of animals. Sometimes we would bake it. I think an alligator was one of the things I remember him doing. And I remember distinctively having these uh, these ridges all the way back. I'm just going to do three, even though I can see it's got four, so I'm kind of simplifying it, which makes it kind of cartoonish, but that's okay. That's too far over. not looking so hot. Oh, Tikiwa, hey, welcome. Sorry I missed your uh, comment. Have you been, you been here long? 
Uh, hopefully your Lego wielding son be to your liking at his realization. Have you uh, started on that, Tikiwa? I hope you're still here. 21.59. What time is it now? Oh, yeah. So it was just a moment ago. You're still here. My bad. Did you start that? I uh, was hoping to actually be able to follow along in the stream when you're working on that. But my hours are a little... My work hours kind of overlap with when you, you have started. Oh, awesome. I'll have to go and watch what I missed on the stream. That's one thing nice about... Uh, about streaming as you can go back and rewatch. All right, so that's right. So I'm not turning down too much now. I'm looking at it could be like a por porcupine or something, but great. So uh, how's it going? Do you like it so far? Is it a fun subject? Imagine, as I said before, that can be challenging. I learned a lot with my watercolor building. Hopefully, I can bring some of that into this. Nice. This eye right here is obviously too far. See, that's what's amazing about this move tool. You can just do anything. I'm going to go ahead and use the... Uh, Let's see, I think in maybe put this eye in first. Like this. And I was thinking I could probably uh, kind of put his eyelids around it. I don't know, we'll see if that works. They really have kind of squinty eyes, really. Use the move tool to kind of. Oops. So this is a good sign. All right. Yeah, see, I'm overdoing it and smoothing it out. That's fine. I'll leave it like that. Aren't there nostrils on somewhere? Where are its nostrils? I don't quite see the nostrils. I can kind of see something's... That is not a great alligator, but it was kind of a challenging uh, subject, and I gave it a bit of a shot. But boy, there's a lot of anatomy and stuff in there that I'm not even really getting close to doing. Um, there would be more. I'm definitely not finished with this, that's for sure. But I am covering out of time. There's a lot of work that would have to continue in here like oops um continuous so you kind of carve away to get more of the shape
So you get the idea. Although I probably should do, like I was saying about capturing the, he's a chocolate croc. Yeah, I tend to when I'm trying to sculpt fast just stick with this uh, this brown brown color. Uh, in some of the tutorials I used, I saw that a lot of uh, sculptors work in this just work in this one color. is a good mid-tone. Yeah, that's that's what I think they were saying in the, in the uh, video I was learning from. It was like a live stream maybe. And they would tend to make it kind of more shiny like this, but now that I've got it uh, started, I think I'll... Um, where was it? Oh, I guess I have to... There we go, select that and then it gives me that and choose the settings and bring the specularity way down because the uh, croc really isn't very specular, I'll bring the roughness up. Oh, that's that's too, too, too low. I guess I didn't realize how much the specularity and the roughness together would uh, change it. I don't know, I guess they look a little wetter than that, so maybe I'll bring it back down. In any case, eh, not my best work, but it's, you know, it's a practice. It's trying to trying to build the, the um, build of experience and just go ahead and save that. I may come back in here and just try again with this reference, so. That, that is that. Oh, I was going to bring up the thing I did last week. I wanted to do a little bit more of that. Let's try loading that. I thought I might do here that, that could be interesting is... Uh, Oh, it said I couldn't have any more layers before, though. Uh, so what I could do is take this layer. Oops. Take this layer and that layer, and I can merge them. Uh, is that under Actions? Merge, there we go. Okay, so this is all one layer now, and I'm just going to go ahead and now I can make a new layer. That's a cool layer. Alright, let me do it. And I'm just going to bring up, uh, let's see, this is a pretty good bar, I'm looking for a bar here. So what I want to do is make a fence. So I need, uh, first of all, I need like a black. Let's put it like I'd be building a fence right here. Um, okay, it says obviously I need more resolution. go and Uh -oh. 
So how you been, Tikiwat? You must be on on your break now. Must be nice to be done with school for a bit. Are you focusing on your art now? Obviously you are with the project you mentioned. I'm looking forward to seeing. Alright, so look at the reference. segments here. Yeah, on the break, we'll hopefully be streaming daily from now on. Oh, that's great. Really makes some headway. I've noticed I dropped off a little bit and uh, and boy, it, it definitely sets you back. Like it's uh, when you're on, oops, I need to have this on uh, single mode. When you're on regularly and people know what to expect you until my contract for my job comes back. Oh, what do you do when you, what's your contract? What do you, what do, you do when you're, uh... when you're working? Oh, you work in a warehouse. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to take this. Oh, for one thing, this is too big. And too close. A Lego warehouse. Nice. My son would be very jealous. He loves Legos. these two. kind of straight on. I don't want it to look totally straight on. I want to have some uh, variety to it, but in any case, we can merge those two. I think we'd be losing a little bit of detail in each merge, though. Yes, I am, and that isn't going to work. All right, so I got another idea. What I can do is I can take this guy. I think I can make it a stamp. Let's see if that works. Might work. Uh, to well, a new Amazon contract will hopefully be coming in, but who knows when this will happen? So I'll be streaming and doing the very occasional landscaping to manage over the next little while. Nice. Sounds like you have some stuff that will keep you busy then. Nice also to have the. Um, 
to have the uh, freedom to. Oops. Let's see. I'm gonna take this here. I'm gonna scale it down. This just feels too big to me right now. Oh, this one right here. And delete. That's better. I could just line it up so that it matches the ground. There we go. Okay. Let's me go ahead and duplicate that guy. Put it over here. All right. So that's kind of kind of makes it a little more interesting. Um, still drives me nuts that this is orange. Oh, which reminds me, the one other thing I'm going to do before calling it a stream, I, I did want to just go ahead and save this. I'll save. I'm going to create a new lay or new project just to see if I can make pink when I'm not in this environment. I don't. I think that I may have maxed out the memory here and that might be what's causing this. Let's see. Let's see if that's the case. New blank session. Okay, so now if I create clay and I make it hot pink. Oops. Yeah, I get pink. That's the color I wanted. So it's definitely a bug. That was clearly a bug. Um, let me see if I can do it with that uh, custom tool, though, just for the heck of it. In fact, just for the heck of it, I'm going to... I'm going to take... make a little... make kind of a tree type thing. Uh, actually, that could be... Okay, so what was the issue? It was just, it was just the environment. It was, I think, it was just a bug that um, somehow there was a light or something. I don't know. Something was weird about that that uh, file because I'm out of that file now and I can make make it without any trouble. I'm not sure what it was, why it had that, that issue. some of the really thin offshoots to see that. Or if it's easier to actually meet up with it like that. I don't know, it seems a little awkward. so hard not to repeat it because uh, I so frequently make uh, make such 
uh, gas in the line. Right, so anyway, that's that's uh now I'm just gonna create a new layer. That sculpt layer, and now I'm gonna choose I'm gonna choose custom, go back to my custom ones. It's this one, and I'm going to make it as pink as it gets. I can just go ahead and. Okay, we need more resolution than that. One, two. There we go. Uh, I ran into the edge though. Can we maybe take the resolution one back? No, wait, let me just try this again. Add. Let's go up there. Until the time unless I just wanted to satisfy my intention to have a tree with some actual uh, pink on it. Just because I picked a powder. I'm gonna pick. You know what? This is red. So it may have something to do with doing this level of detail. Because look, I can make a new layer. New layer. And I can pick a simpler shape. And that's the color I get, but when I choose this shape, that is a different color. The color is the same. Well, I learned something interesting about medium because these are just different shapes. Why is this coming out as black? That's weird that it'd be preserving the original color that makes no sense at all. That's that's really weird. Let 
that will be green. But that can be green, but it is a little, little different. But this is black. And this. Wait, that. I wonder if it is preserving, somehow trying to preserve the color of the original layer. That's another theory. So let's try adding a new layer and a scope layer. And I'm going to just. Uh, and start out with these guys and just make lots and lots of them. All right, now I'm going to take that and make that make that a stamp. So here it is as a stamp. And it looks normal now. Oh, but look, the color is white. Oh. Okay, so Tiki Walk, you're still there and you're curious what was happening. It seems to preserve the color because white is pink now. Okay, so creating custom layer seems to preserve. I can make it black, but uh, like the one that I made black, I couldn't make anything else. It would only make black. Yeah, so I figured out what the problem is. The problem was that there was color in the stamp. When I make a stamp like this, using this tool, I need to make it I think I have to make it white if I want it to do what I was trying to do. So the stamp I was using to do this was already a color that was mutating or um, not mutating, but was uh, it was changing the color. Because look, yes, yeah, so, see, I made this one that is if I set this to white, I get the pink color that I started with. But if, and if I set it to like green, I get black. And if I set it to red, that's oh, it was a little hard to see, but it's kind of, although that should be a perfectly true red, it's kind of a uh, pink, slightly pinkish. And the closer I get to white, the more pink it's going to look. Okay, so I learned an important lesson about making stamps. You can't make them with color. Let me let me try making and let me make a new I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna make a new layer. Uh scope layer. And I'm going to use white for sure. I'm gonna choose basic stamp. I'm going to make it like that. And I'm going to say, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and make a stamp out of it. Now I have this as a stamp. It's white. Yeah, now the colors are, are acting normal. That's what I thought it would do in the first place. Now I get it. Okay. Well, I'm glad I figured that out because that was driving me absolutely nuts last time. Uh, cool. No need to save this. This is just an experiment. And uh, I wonder if there's a way that to clean those... I don't necessarily want to keep these.
custom things. Can I? No. I don't know. I'll figure that out some other time. Okay, so. So this brings us to the last uh, activity tonight. I was going to do. So I have this new thing uh, I'm doing. I think I mentioned it uh, when I dropped in to, on Kit Slam's stream before when you were there. Um, Tikiwa. I can't have seen a couple of these, but what I'm doing is I'm reading. Um, here, I'll pull it up. It's actually here on my uh, GAN, uh, GAN journal channel in. Um, this is the sub creation um, uh, Discord. And I'm going to go ahead and invite you. Uh, I did I did the cubing already. That was how we uh, did the um, arrived at doing an alligator. Catlin won again. She usually does. Uh, I actually lost my um, the Ruby's cube. I usually use. Hopefully it'll turn up here pretty soon. So I'm I did a two by two. I got the best time ever, of course, because there are only eight um, cubes, uh, eight uh, squares to. Position, but anyway, what I'm doing now is reading these uh, these stories that I'm uh, developing. <clears throat> Essentially, it's a episodic story, 16 seconds. <laughs> no, no, no. I've never gotten 16 seconds. I got a minute. Uh, let's see. Actually, I can pull it up here, and we'll see. A minute 24 today. Okay. Um, 17, <laughs> try a, a minute 17 would be a little bit more good. So anyway, I, I'm going to pull up, I have another window with the, uh, with the art and, uh, let's see. The idea is going to, is just, I'm going to read this, um, oops, I am, I'm in the wrong place here. I have to have it up here. So the idea is I'm just going to read. So these are stories, episodic content, uh, similar to the adventures of Brian uh, that uh, Orange Monkey Art does. Um, but instead, it's just a, a episodic content that's inspired by Gan Art. Um, I have a series of these I'm doing now, and then the um, yeah, I'm doing. The, I've been doing the writing so far. But the hope is that this would eventually turn into sort of a collaborative thing, the way Orange Monkey Art does his. Um, but the only thing is there is a bit of like a, a slight more, a slight of a slight bit of a uh, constraint to it that it's supposed to be illustrated with uh, Gan Art. So you kind of the process for it, the creative process is you find a series of images uh, that in in Gan Breeder, and then uh, you write a story based on those and each episode is continuing the same story but they're all um, based on on uh, ideas that you get from, from these images so without further ado I'll continue our story for this week I can give you a little bit of, of background it's uh, the story is being told um, from somewhat of sort of a unreliable narrator type character uh, he's traveling with some companions and they've been in search of some ancient technology <clears throat> We've eaten nothing but mater fruit and gandleberries for almost a week. Apparently, I don't get to complain because of my part in the Brufflemore scare that led to Nigel dropping all of our supplies over the ravine. Had there been an actual Brufflemore, I doubt they would have thanked me. Ungrateful. Still, no people to be seen, and hence no reasonable accommodations. Two months and counting. Jack tried to get me to eat some of his gandleberries or some of his green, excuse me, try to get me to eat some of his green heel nuts. Senseless. Anyway, I was supposed to be going through the images as we did, but so these are the images. Apparently these would be the uh, mater fruit and the uh, mater fruit, the gandleberries, and here we have the green heel nuts. So that's, that's it. Uh, 
that's the episode for this week. If you want to read more, oh, I, I did want to share uh, the, the Discord, so please go and join the Discord. You can follow along. I post them a couple of days uh, before I do the stream. And uh, you're welcome also to post your art in the um, artwork section. Uh, there's inspiration is going there also, and I also post the reference for the work that we're doing. So, uh, yeah, so that's that's it. That's the stream for for tonight. Thanks for joining. Um, have lots of fun. Uh, great to hear that you're uh, you got to start on that project. Take you on. Looking forward to following it. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, I commissioned a, a piece from Tikiwa. He's doing a drawing of my son with a uh, Millennium Falcon, so I'm very excited to see how that progresses. If you're not following Tikiwa, you should go follow him right now. You can see how that, that proceeds. And now I'm going to uh, pull up the person that we are going to raid. So I hope everyone's ready to raid. Um, I'm going to pull up the, the raid call sign. And and we can just post that. OK. And I'm going to switch over to, there we go. Let's see. It's odd. It says I'm currently hosting. Oh, this must be old. It says I'm hosting Peppo, but I can't be hosting Peppo. I'm live. Let's see what it says now. All right. So let's see what our options are. We've got Freakmeister, Oak, Kid Slam, and Paint Creatures, and think I will raid Kit Slam again. So if everyone's ready, awesome. Okay, so um, so anyway, thanks again for joining. Have a lot of fun, and I'll see you guys again on uh, Sunday or sooner. If you're streaming Tikiwa, I'll catch your stream uh, very soon. Good night. Got the countdown going, so I need to get the credits working because I haven't figured that out. I had credits before, but all right, bye now. <laughs>